Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our deep programming language series. In today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about the LLDB debugger. I'm going to show you how to use it with DMD and primarily on LDC2, which has a nice debugging experience. I'm going to be showing you from the terminal so that you can sort of understand exactly what's going on. And there might be other integrations that you want to look at with things like VS Code, or maybe we'll cover those in the series later. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in and I'll show you how to get started with debugging on Mac, as well as just getting set up in general for deprogramming in the Mac environment. Okay, so we're going to begin working with the wonderful D programming language. I'm going to be working with both the DMD compiler and the LDC compiler. And because I'm on a Mac right now, I'm going to go ahead and preface that I'll prefer the LDC compiler working with LLDB, at least on the new Apple uh, M1 or M2 or whatever new Apple Silicon comes out. Uh, because that seems to be the preferred workflow when working with LLDB, which is more tightly integrated with LLVM and so on. So first thing first that we need to get started with is setting up LLDB. You can go to the releases. You can use one of your package managers. Again, if you're on a different platform like Ubuntu or on Windows or whatever for setting up LLDB, uh, you can go ahead and do that. But again, I'm just going to show you on Mac. Uh, for the most part, Mac folks can, as simple as possible, go to a uh, terminal. Let's go ahead and open one up here. And usually you can type out LLDB to see if you have it. Uh, a relatively recent or even an old version is fine for the purpose of this tutorial here. So just make sure that you have LLDB. I believe when I first installed this, I just typed it out in the prompt and then I was prompted for an install. But again, you can use whatever package manager you want. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So if you don't have a D compiler, make sure that you go to downloads. And again, I'll show you on DMD how to get set up, but I'm going to prefer LDC. I'll talk about why. Uh, and then if you stick around towards the end, um, I'll show you some other cool debugging stuff. But I want to show you at least the basics. So once you follow the download instructions for LDC, which again, uh, should be somewhat self-explanatory, you can use this script or again, um, you know, use one of these options here. Uh, then we want to go ahead and activate LDC. And I'll go ahead and assume that you can follow the download for DMD as well. Uh, but for LDC, you'll run this to uh, activate LDC. And if you type out LDC2, you should be able to see that uh, it's running if you get some message like that. Uh, and you can type out help or whatever and see what version. Uh, if you scroll around, you are working with, with LDC. I'll go ahead and just show you, um, again, if you didn't catch earlier that I'm working with uh, LDC version uh, 1.30. Uh, but here's all the different compiler options. And they're going to be slightly different than DMD. That's why I'm going to show you both. Um, but that should help get you set up with LDC. Now, the thing that you're going to want to do now is make sure that you have some test file here, like this test file here. Relatively simple D program uh, with a main function, uh, doing some computation, calling another function, writing a line. You know, this will uh, execute and run without any bugs. Uh, so that's the actual program we'll take a look at here. And let's go ahead and compile it on uh, LDC here. So in order to compile and debug, we need debugging symbols. So dash G is the important symbol. So normally we'd compile with the compiler uh, and the source file and then maybe the output name, but we want debugging information. So dash G and then dash GC for LDC gives you extra debugging information. So you can go ahead and go to documentation, command line reference, and find these things in the OSX. Um, or the Linux or Windows for the different command line arguments. But the really important one that you want is, again, dash G, which tells you that it adds this additional symbolic information, OK, for GDB, LLDB, et cetera. Uh, I couldn't find a dash uh, GC here because this is for, well, the DMD compiler, not the LDC one. Uh, but I'll just go ahead and tell you that you know that gives you all the uh, additional information from my understanding for helping us debug. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, dive in here. Again, I'll show you on LDC and then briefly on DMD what you can do. But once our program's compiled, let's just make sure it runs. Again, it just computes uh, the value 9. Again, here is that test program if you want to see it. Again, not doing anything super interesting, just adding and writing out a value and a function that doesn't really do anything. OK, but we want to learn how to step through and debug this. Uh, so when we have more complicated programs, we can make some progress. All right, and how do we do this? Well, we're going to use LLDB. So I go ahead and just type this in the prompt. And you'll notice that after I hit Enter, my prompt has changed, indicating that we are now in LLDB. 
And what I'll go ahead and do is I need a program or a target to monitor. So I can type uh, file and PROG, and that'll look in this current directory and see does it find program. It does. Uh, so in my current directory where I'm at, and that's now the executable that we are investigating. Now, LLDB has great capabilities where you can, for instance, target a program that's already running, and that would be, you know, a nice feature. But I'm just going to show you how to sort of launch a program now. And now let's just go ahead and run our program from within LLDB. So I type in run or R for short, and you'll see a new process was launched, specifically our program. Uh, it computes its answer here, and then it exited successfully, which is usually indicated and programmed by returning zero. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Ran like normal, but again, was being run within LLDB, so we could investigate it if we need. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit. Let's say that we're done here with LLDB, so we're back to our regular prompt. Uh, now we can repeat this experiment. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control L. Depending on what terminal you're using, you can type in clear sometimes. Uh, and that'll clear your screen. Uh, but let's go ahead and restart here. Now, another way that you can monitor your program is just by doing LLDB dot slash prog, and that will immediately create a target for a program. So we are watching this executable. That's what we're currently set to run when we type run, okay? Uh, and there's different ways that you can set this up. So if you have arguments, for instance, uh, that you wanna pass into your program, you would just say, you know, my uh, arguments here, and that'll run your program with your arguments as normal here, okay, within LLDB, and then you can put your other arguments uh, related to LLDB before here, okay? So again, you'll go ahead and see this is run here, and because I passed in this additional setting, again, LLDB is smart, and it's keeping track of these uh, arguments, or if you don't want to exit LLDB every time, you can run this command, and it'll set your arguments for your program, so just some things that you can do. But again, let's try to do something interesting here, meaning actually run our program. But we don't want to just run it and execute. We want to pause and be able to uh, investigate the state that that program's in. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is set a breakpoint. So I can type out breakpoint. Uh, and I can type set, for instance. Uh, and I'm going to set it by the name and at main. And I'll hit enter here. Now you'll notice immediately what happens uh, is somewhat interesting is it sets the breakpoint uh, here. It's in a D file, entry point dot D uh, at you know line 39, column 17 here it looks like. But I didn't write this file. We wrote a program called test.d. So let's at least see what happens if I type run here. And after we've typed run here, again our process has launched. And well, we hit our breakpoint, right? It's telling us if we read through all this that the reason that we stopped is that we hit our you know first breakpoint here. Uh, so break means we're stopping or pausing the execution of our program. And again, it happened at line 37 where we found some function that had main in it. That is essentially what happened when we said set breakpoints at functions where main is here. Uh, so that was the first one that it found an exact match. And uh, well we're not in our decode. Uh, but what you will notice is that there's this additional main function that's invoked before we run, and it actually calls some other main here. And in fact, if we look at the parameters here, you'll find out that that's underscore D main. And in fact, I'll show you how to look that up again towards the end of this video. But the idea is we don't want to break here. So let's go ahead and put a breakpoint at underscore D main, okay? Uh, and my old habits, sometimes I do BR, but just B, and that'll put a breakpoint at this function. So I can do a breakpoint at a specific line number in the current file if we want, or the function, or for instance, um, you know, that, that'll do the trick for us. And uh, let's go ahead and now see our breakpoints. So I can type out uh, breakpoint list here, and that'll list out everything. Let me clear our screen here, control L. Let's just list our breakpoints. So I don't want this one anymore, so let's delete it. So uh, B, short for breakpoint, and delete, number one. Uh, and, hmm, well, it seems like it's uh, complaining about that. So let's actually uh, run our program. Oh, it is running here. Let's get rid of it. Um, let's go ahead and now delete our breakpoint. So breakpoint, delete, one. And you've got to spell these things correctly, otherwise it will um, yell at you. Uh, but and you just kind of play around with it like I did here. So didn't like the shorthand there, but breakpoint, delete one. Okay, so that location has been disabled or removed. And let's again 
Uh, I can just hit the up arrow so I don't have to keep typing in front of you and making more mistakes. I can just do breakpoint list. And you'll see that we have, um, well, the commands that failed here, looking for some other breakpoint, that's fine, but uh, just our one breakpoint at main. Okay, so that's our point. Let's get to uh, running this. So now if I run this, I'm gonna hit Control L first to clear my screen, enter. Uh, restart our process since I didn't uh, finish it. And now you'll see we're in our actual code. So this is actually useful. So now we're in our main here and we can step through our program. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna do next here to move to the next line. And you'll see that it prints out the next thing that happened and some of the context or nearby lines here. And this is the next uh, line that we're going to execute here. Compute seven plus two. So go ahead and do uh, next or just N for short, move down to the next line. And again, because we're debugging, maybe we want to see what happened here. So I can type print compute, and that'll evaluate this expression and tell us what uh, compute is. So we get the value 9. Uh, and it is telling us that it's an integer here, so that's quite nice. Uh, and if for some reason, if we were confused as to you know what the type is, you know we could uh, maybe find out some more information, image, look up. Uh, now, I think we all know what a uh, integer is, but I'm just telling you the type of an int. Uh, and that'll tell us what it is, you know, the byte size, um, and maybe some other information. So if you have some data structure here, that might give you more interesting results um, and so on. But uh, let's go ahead and get back to where we were. And the way to sort of get back is to just, you know, F here, show me the current frame where I am. Or you can try L minus, which will show you some of the previous lines. Uh, let's try L plus. Uh, it doesn't look like that works, but L uh, minus here again, kind of moves us back and forth. So let's go ahead and uh, just type frame. Oops, that looks like everything. Uh, so just F here again to tell us where we're at. So that's the current frame and it gives us some information of where we are here and what's going on. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and proceed here. Now I'm at this function here, foo, this is what I'm about to do. And again, maybe if I want to see what's going on, let's go ahead and just press S and this will step into this function. And now we've actually stepped into foo. So our control flow has moved us. Again, I can do F for, uh, you know, framing us again, in case we get lost or if we uh, move around here with L minus, uh, oops, there's nowhere we can go. So it doesn't do anything. Let's do F, tell us where we're at. And uh, well, now let's go ahead and see what could be interesting here. And what I mean by seeing what could be interesting, like let's go ahead and just execute some of these lines here. So uh, next, uh, next again, and we could see, you know, we've, essentially executed all this function. Now we're about to return here at line six here, but again, I want to see what happened. So uh, again, uh, frame F for short, just to see where we're at. Uh, and then frame, which you saw me type, uh, which is kind of helpful. And then I can go ahead and say info. Uh, so again, you know, where are we in our uh, sort of program stack? Uh, and wh what information do we have? I can do stuff like frame, uh, not info, frame variables. Uh, and again, you have to spell these things right frame variables, let's see if I can do it properly, or frame uh, v uh, for short here. Uh, that's exactly what it's doing. It's gonna list out all of your local variables and their values, so you don't have to print them out here. Uh, so for example, you could just print something here. And again, the key is you have to do this before you leave this function, otherwise you aren't gonna get any information, okay? Uh, now the other useful thing is, you know, when I've been typing out uh, f here, uh, it's telling us we're at frame zero. Well, what if we've been executing our program for a while and we've stepped into a bunch of functions? Uh, that's where the BT command's super useful. So this will give you the backtrace or the call stack. And again, the star indicating where you are. Uh, if you have multiple threads, there's ways that you can sort of move around. But uh, the idea is star here is useful for telling us, hey, we're in this test function here. Okay, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what this uh, name is. It's a little bit of a weird name, uh, but we saw that we are called from D main and then all this other stuff here. So again, this is where we started uh, our sort of stack frame, but uh, this is where we currently are. And you can move uh, up and down uh, the stack frame. So let's go ahead and just move down here. Now it says we're already at the bottom. We can't go, um, you know, to negative one. So we got to move up here and that's going to effectively complete the execution of this function. You can also do things like finish, which will just run the program to completion, uh, which is fine. Uh, let's just go ahead and show you continue, which will run the program all the way until it hits another breakpoint. If there are no breakpoints, it will terminate. Okay, so those are a few of the things that we can do here. Now, let's just go ahead and kind of restart this process here. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit here. 
uh, relaunch my program here. And I want to go ahead and show you how to find uh, main because it's useful. Um, because, uh, well, it'll help you find other functions. So I can do image lookup. And uh, let's just go ahead and look up uh, main here. Uh, oh, doesn't look like it found anything. So let me try this again. And you'll learn some of these arguments like dash n for main here. Uh, and it looks like it found one function here that had main. This is sort of the regular expression. Um, I can actually type, try this with main. Nope, didn't find it uh, with the star. No, so I guess it has different capabilities for this sort of querying. Uh, but the point is it found one main function in program and entry point. But again, we didn't write this. We're looking for that D main function. Uh, so what we can do here is do image lookup uh, and do a recursive search here. Uh, and then, you know, for anything that, you know, sort of matches main, uh, then we get a whole bunch of stuff here. <laughs> okay, so all these different uh, symbols here. And if we look, you know, carefully through them, we will find the word main in all these listings. Uh, but I've got to go all the way up towards the top here, past all of our uh, symbols, uh, and see where we had some of these uh, matches here. Let's see, this was the command that we last ran here. But eventually, you will see that we have this function underscore uh, d main. Um, uh, oops, I highlighted it. Sorry, I'll move back here. Uh, just to briefly show you that um, that's where we're actually uh, executing our main from. This is in our test file at line eight. Okay, so that's how you find the d main. Uh, and you could pipe or filter this output somewhere if you wanted to sort of query around um, and find your files only, uh, that would be fine here. Okay, uh, so let me go ahead and clear that up. And uh, that should give you an idea of how to use LLDB to debug here. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, before we terminate, though, let's go ahead and try um, to again, put a breakpoint uh, at D main. And let's go ahead and run our program. And that foo function was pretty interesting. So let's just put a breakpoint at foo. Um, and again, you're going to see the, the mangled name for foo. Uh, because in D, right, it's got the module name beforehand, test. Uh, so you know we'd really see this as like test.foo or something like that. Um, and depending on if you're doing this in GDB, that's exactly what you do. But in uh, LLDB, it'll just find you know the current file that you're in, um, and you can look at the sort of mangled name. So just a little note on that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and quit uh, LLDB here, uh, and this was in our LDC version of debugging. And then let me go ahead and show you the D version here, uh, just in case you prefer or have to use the DMD compiler. Similar flags, we're always using dash G to get the debugging information, but there's also dash GF to give us sort of uh, additional information um, of our symbols. So I'll go ahead and run this, and we'll effectively do the same thing with LLDB. Let's go ahead and just launch immediately with our program. We know uh, the breakpoint is at D main, where we usually want to start. Go ahead and run. And again, we'll see where we're at. Now, one thing I think they're still working on with uh, either an LLDB or D side is um, stepping into functions. So if I try to step here, uh, it's going to try to step in, but it looks like it just kind of proceeds forward. So that's one reason I've had a better experience on LDC. But a lot of the other stuff, like uh, the backtraces, and uh, you know, we could try to put a breakpoint on uh, foo here. It looks like it didn't work here. Uh, Test.foo. Uh, again, still don't work. So LDC is just a little bit better. You don't have to provide the sort of mangled names and some of those things. Um, and I think if you do look around the DMD compiler, there's ways to uh, help it export debugging information just to make things a little bit better. But again, that was just a little note uh, that I would prefer you debug on uh, LDC, at least that's what I've been doing on Mac, and that's been working uh, wonderfully. It's got you know as many features as I need. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope it was useful, and debugging is such an essential skill. And there's so much more that you can do with debugging that this is just touching the surface. Feel free to check in the description some links to some more resources on debugging as I add them. And with that said, I hope you're enjoying the deprogramming series, and with this additional tool to be able to debug your code, you can do some more awesome development. So thanks again for your time, and we'll see you in the next one.